The Friday Rugby Preview with Stuart Cameron. Hello and welcome to the Friday Rugby Preview on Rugby Radio, where we look ahead to the club rugby scene in Scotland from a Borders perspective. And in the show, I'm joined by Dale Clancy. And Dale, let's have a quick look at uh, what happened last week, first of all. The big headline was the fact that Hoyk have now lost their unbeaten record, which goes back over a year. Uh, Kelso drawing at home to Heriot's Blues, but still unbeaten. That's two draws in a row for them. And uh, Jed Forrest and Selkirk losing... This is, of course, in the Premiership. Yeah, I think, obviously, the, the Hoyt result losing on the road is a, it's a huge, huge, you know, uh, blow for Man- the Mansfield Park men because they've had such a great run over the last, uh, you know, well, obviously 12 months, certainly. You know, their last defeat was at Fuller and then to be defeated there again is, uh, is a huge blow for them. But, you know, there's nothing better than, you know, trying to get back on the horse in a, a border derby against a team who've come up from National 1 obviously got two draws, games that they could have won and perhaps also could have lost. So, you know, it's an intriguing weekend for those two sides. But I think, the you know, looking at the, the fixtures in the Premiership this weekend, there's a lot, a lot of focus on that Selkirk Jed game at Philippoch. That is huge for both of those sides. Yet to get off the board at all in the league. I think this is going to have a, a huge say in terms of confidence going forward for the rest of the campaign. Well, let's look at um, Hoyk then. Hoyk against Kelso. Two Premiership derbies, uh, both border league matches as well. But Hoyk-Kelso, first of all, this is happening at Mansfield Park. But of course, Hoyk are undefeated since, well, October 2019. And uh, how long are we going to be talking about that? It's a difficult game for Hoyt to go into because Kelso will be really, really up for this. I think there is no fear at Poinder of this division, which is great because sometimes, you know, some teams come up and crumble slightly and then we pop back down to the, the division below. But I think that's a huge, huge game. It's brilliant. It's going to be a really a really good occasion at Mansfield Park, but it's a difficult game for Hoyt, I think, more. The pressure's on them. Nobody's expecting Kelso to go to Mansfield Park and pick up a victory so you know it's, it's a big game for Hoyt to try and bounce back against the pressure will certainly be on them Hoyt we could see a backlash we could see them kind of fold uh, after the Mar uh, result as well and of course let's not forget Kelso give them credit they're currently the number one Borders team as far as rankings concerned two draws in the Premiership you know that's not a bad return and as I said before it's games that they, they could have won they could have also lost but the, the, the facts are they've got two draws they've got a, a good points tally after two games which is really really important in this division so they go into this game as I say with no fear the difficulty is they've lost a, a player to suspension obviously Terry Logan in the front row and you feel that that is going to have a big impact in the game there's a lot of good players in the front row for, for Kels so obviously got the experience of Grant Shields in there as well so you know they've got players there but Hoyk have a strong strong pack a really really strong pack and that's what their game is is based on and based around that's what's made them so successful so you know that could be telling for Kelso but I don't think it's going to be the narrative of the story at Mansfield I do anticipate it's going to be going to be quite close let's hear from uh, both camps then Neil Hinnigan the director of rugby at Kelso and first head coach of Hoyk Matty Douglas yeah I look really excited for this weekend I think in terms of obviously disappointed with the result last weekend as a group and as a coaching team, and, and look, we, we spoke after the game on Saturday. It's all about how, re, how we react now. How, how do we come on Tuesday night? What sort of attitude do we bring? And, and how can we, you know, f- fix a performance that just wasn't there on Saturday? And look, Tuesday night was a top quality session. A lot of players put their hand up for selection. And I think in terms of a reaction, it's what we, we wanted as coaches and, and, and in my mind I've no doubt about it that, that we're in the right frame of mind going into Saturday and, and look we'll have to be Kelso are a, a quality side if you give them too much space you know they've got a, a, a clear great game plan in the way they play and um, you know they've got a good forward pack there that can, can set um, they've got a, a couple of backs in there that'll do damage so it's um, you know going to be a, a, a fiery game and, and look I've got a lot of respect for, for Bruce and, and Kev in terms of what they've done last season and they, they've probably been a bit unlucky not to get two wins in the first opening two rounds so for us we need to be at our best, we're, we're back at home and we are tough to beat at home and we need to get back into that sort of frame of mind and we've challenged the players a lot this week as coaches and the kind of feeling that, that I've got from them, um, they, no doubt about it that they're in the right frame of mind and we're going to have to be 
Um, if we want to get top four this season, then we can't let performances like that happen week after week um, that, that happened at Mar on Saturday. We picked up five points, which is not too bad for the start of the campaign. And now we face our first real challenging, daunting task, really, to go to Mansell Park uh, and take on the Scottish champions who have not lost a game there for four years. So that tells you what, what we're up against. You know, even on off days, they were still, they're still winning there. So it's going to take a, a mammoth effort from our lads, but, you know, you've got to face that challenge head on. And I think... Um, that's one thing about our players, they'll they'll see that as a as a challenge and go there with the right frame of mind and an open mind and you know, put our best foot forward and see what we can do. Uh there's quite a few changes to the team. Um Nick Stingle gets his first start of the season as Andy takes away to a wedding. Um Cammy Thompson's obviously dropped out from a bad injury to his shoulder last week. Uh Ewan Thompson gets a well deserved start in the boiler house. Um, Keith Melbourne comes out of the bench for his first appearance this year. James Thompson and Morgan Thompson also come out of the bench and they'll be looking to uh, all get their Premiership debuts from the bench, all three of them. So um, that, that'll be good for them. Um, elsewhere in the park, Charlie Marshall swaps with Ewan Knox. Uh, just a bit of poor rotation again. Uh, so a few a few changes to the team, but still a fairly ish settled side and as I say these guys deserve a chance so it's a test in depth for us this week but as I say we, we couldn't really be in the Premiership without having a little bit of depth and um, we'd always like more but starting to get tested a bit now but we're still in a, in a good place and we go there with an open mind and try and get something out of the game and um, if we could get a win it would be a massive huge shot, shot in the arm it would be a, a complete and utter confidence boost but uh, yeah I mean obviously high close to to Mar last week, which for some people is maybe um, surprising, but I think the way the league's sort of panning out already, that seems to be anyone can sort of surprise anyone on their day. So, uh, yeah, you just never know. Neil Hennigan, the director of rugby at Kelso. Before that, Matty Douglas from Hoyk. Let's concentrate on the Selkirk Jed Forest game then. Uh, we're going to be live there. Uh, really looking forward to this one. It's uh, Jed Forest at uh, Philip Hawk against Selkirk. We're going to hear from Kevin Barry, who's currently in charge of uh, the Jed Forest. Of course, uh, no stranger to Philip Hawk himself, having been head coach at Selkirk in the past. And uh, also the new coach of Selkirk, who is Gordon Patterson. You know, Jed at home, both teams look at obviously looking for a win, but for us, it's about being accurate in certain areas of our game, bringing physicality to our game again and you know if we do that then you know the result will be the result and we hope it's a win for Selkirk uh, working extremely hard the boys last night it was a really intense session they went really well and so you know we'll wait until selection we've got a few names hopefully Ross Nixon's back this week which will be good just to have around the squad um, but uh, we'll hopefully we'll pick a, pick a squad later today or, to, or tomorrow and um, we'll you know we'll prepare on Thursday night to play Selk- uh, to play Jed so we're really looking forward to that home game and you know, a bit more importantly is getting that performance in over 80 minutes, which hopefully will, will get us over the line uh, for our first one. We've got to look at our strength and play to our strength on um, Saturday to try and get something out of the game or, or get that win. Um, we're capable of doing it. Uh, we've got some young boys uh, at the present moment that are standing up again. Young Mark Glenn at, at Scrum Half and Jimmy Ferguson uh, had a reasonable game up at uh, Curry. So again, we'll try to put some of the young boys in uh, with the older heads. But again, it's going to be a difficult game on Saturday. Third game in, we've got to try and put some of the, the pressure that we're in territory in at some point. And, um, and again, it's uh, then we've got to actually look at our defensive uh, structures and try and keep to them as much as possible and show a bit of commitment and a bit of physicality in it, the game. So an intriguing one. I mean, I mean, we we've seen this in the past. You know, when we're choosing the games to cover, etc. It sometimes the top of the table clashes turn out to be pretty bad. But uh, sometimes when we go elsewhere and we look at the bottom end of the table, that's when you can get an absolute cracker. But we could also get a dower match. We just don't know what we're going to see on Saturday. Because I'm not affiliated to any of the teams, I think the story behind it all and the actual game and how it unfolds, like the league itself, is so interesting because you're actually interested in the rugby. You're interested in seeing where the results come in. And I think because this is at the it is early doors, remember, but it's at the foot of the table, this is going to be a big, big game in terms of the say of where these clubs are going to be playing the rugby maybe next season or you know where they're going to be angling their focus 
for the rest of this season, certainly, because you feel if one team gets a good win, a sizable win, and they can keep their other their, their opponents to nothing, and I don't mean point tally during the game, I mean points on the board for the table, you feel that they've they've opened up a little bit of a, a breathing a breathing room there. So, you know, but you think about who's going to win that game. You know, if it's Celtic with home advantage, they get the chance to go to Riverside and just do a double body blow to Jed if they were to pick up the victory there. You know, they could almost have a 10-point swing on them. But it can be said for Jed as well. You know, you turn that on its head if they go and leave Philip Hawke at the weekend with a bonus point victory, or if they're able to pick up that victory, or you know, able to salvage a draw. That's what then creates the you know the story later on in the season for both of these sides. I, I don't know if I'm being premature with this, but I do think this is a huge, huge game in terms of where this season's going to go for both of these sides. Well, TV highlights of both the Premiership matches on Borders Rugby Television that will be happening uh, on the Sunday, but on the Saturday we're live half past two Rugby Radio. Um, you can uh, get us obviously uh, from the website at bordersrugby.net and we'll be live at 2.30 all the way through till 5 o'clock and obviously bringing you latest scores as well. Let's have a look at National 1 then. Uh, Melrose are on their travels to Hartree Mill very hard place to get a result they're playing bigger. Gala are at GHK spoken a lot about uh, the Watsonians match where Watsonians uh, beat Gala by uh, 69 points to 17 I think it was it was a huge defeat for Gala on the road at Myerside and then last week they turned it round and beat GHA who beat Melrose on the first day of the season so it didn't really make a, a great deal of sense but the National 1's been like that hasn't it? Yeah National 1's been a, a brilliant league you know as I say about the Premiership and the, how I like the division you know it's, it can be echoed about National 1 because it's really intriguing you know, it, it's sometimes difficult to see which team is the strongest, and sometimes it's not always the strongest team that go up either. You know, over the last few years, it's it's been sometimes just about those moments and games and the, the momentum that you can build up and throughout the campaign. As, as Kelso probably exhibited last year, they they managed to build that that momentum and that consistency in a league campaign. So you know, it was brilliant for them. But you know, over the last few years, we've seen. The, the teams have been so, so close in terms of the, the level between them and, and, and what can separate them. And early on, it's probably been more unpredictable than it has been in previous years because they've all kind of taken points off each other. Only Ayr and Highland at the top of the league have been the two teams to to show that consistency over the first couple of weekends. So, you know, another interesting weekend to go in and, and Gala and Melrose certainly will be wanting to build that consistency and momentum because they've almost had a, a little bit of jet get out of jail free card because because everybody's taking points off each other it opens the door for them if they can build that momentum quickly they could start to see themselves in a promotion hunt pretty soon and we have to say fair play to uh, director of rugby at gala ewan swinton who was full of confidence despite shipping it 69 points to the maroons uh, the previous week he said oh you know they're they're not a bad team they've got some good youngsters there they will turn it around and he was absolutely spot on there let's hear what he has to say this week Saturday's game against GHA was a tremendous improvement by the boys. There's no question about that. We had some experience returning uh, and st- strength in the centre in the shape of Dan Nicholson and Scott Peffer. And the whole team just stepped up to what was a significant challenge after a really disappointing result the week before. The boys played with real resolve, real strength. They got absolutely stuck into GHA, who themselves were coming off a good win against Melrose and came to Gala with confidence. And the the Gala boys took the game to them and prevailed. I think what it really shows is how much of rugby is played in the top two inches. Our attitude was absolutely right. We were physical and dominated much of the game, came out on the right side of the penalty count, and the result was a, a good one for us, which takes us forward with lots of confidence into Saturday's game against GHK. GHK themselves have had a mixed start. They had a really strong result against Bigger with a home win and then a a fairly difficult weekend at Melrose. I think what that does reflect is that the the notion that the Glasgow clubs are just that wee bit stronger at home. So I think that we are expecting to see the GHK that uh, played against Bigger come Saturday. We are strengthened again. We've got the return of Murray Wilson and also Robbie Irvin coming back into the team after a, a fairly lengthy absence. So I think that we can go through with a fair bit of confidence, but we'll be realistic. We'll know that it's going to be a really tough challenge. The boys will have to be completely switched on, but there's no reason at all to think that we can't come away with another good result. 
Ewan Swinton, Director of Rugby at Gala, and Gala appearing at GHK, who lost to Melrose last week by a big, big score, 68 points to 7. But this week, they're going to bigger. Let's hear from head coach Ian Chisholm. As a coaching group, and I suppose as a, as a club and a playing group, we're, we're pretty happy with the response and the performance against GHK last weekend. And as a coaching group, we feel like we got things right around selection, around intensity, and it felt like, and it, and it looked like us on the field, and the score probably reflects that. We played at a real tempo, and... GHK broke a wee bit earlier than we expected to, but again, there's there's always a danger when you're 40 0 up at half time. You're gonna take your foot off the gas, maybe try things that we've never done in training before, rather than just chipping away at our process and getting better at the things that that are working. And that that was probably the case in the early exchanges, but we we stuck to task in the end, and I was really pleased to see that our guys execute the game plan and and really just see a transfer of the things that we'd been talking about throughout the week. Bigger at Harshu Mill is a different challenge again. They're trying to play a wee bit different. They're, they're, the ball's in there a wee bit more. They're playing a wee bit more expansive. And look, they've lost a lot of boys from last year, but they've got a really good academy set up through Nick Humphreys there. And I think this league is, is very French and that teams are winning at home and losing away. Bigger lost on the opening day to GHK, but as we know ourselves, you can't really make assumptions about a team based on that. And the bigger rung air close at the weekend and they had a try chalked off early in the game which I thought was harsh and would have made all the difference and kept the points in bigger so look we're, we're not going up there thinking that we should win by 50 points because bigger lost to GHK that's you not know, how sport or rugby works and it is going to be a challenge it always is a challenge Melrose Bigger's been a good battle over the last few years but it's a challenge that the boys are excited for our squad for Saturday is uh, Connor Grindle, Ben McLean, Will Owen in the front row, um, Tam Brown and Angus Runciman. They keep their places in the back row. Uh, Finley Sinclair, Will Ferry and Lachlan Gaddy make up the back row. Bruce Colvin and Struan Hutchison at halfbacks. On the wings, we have Jim Brown and Oliver McKenzie makes his first start for the club. In the centres, we've got Roly Brett and Kieran Clark. I felt I, I felt both of these guys were awesome at the weekend. And uh, Hamish Weir keeps his place at fullback. On the bench, we've got Logan Kirk, Elliot Compton, Hamish Derrick, Dylan Coburn and Robin Sharp. There's not too many changes in the team. I think two out of the starting team that's changed. Finn Barry's away on holiday, so Connor Grindle steps up into the starting squad. And we're excited about the weekend. Uh, we're confident we can go up to Hartree Mill and get a result, but we know it's not going to be easy. Ian Chisholm, National 2, we go into now, and uh, let's have a look at Peeble Sterling, because they're both unbeaten at the moment, both on 10 points, there's quite a few teams actually uh, unbeaten in that league so far. Um, Peeble's at home to Sterling, Peeble's coming off the back of that good win at Stuart's Melville, obviously discipline problems uh, down there as well, which they'll have to look at. Let's hear from their coach, who is Graham Patterson. Obviously it's a, a very good start to our season, uh, but I still see there's, there's growth in this team and there's growth in the, the way that we play um, and hopefully there'll be growth in our points as well. Uh, it is a solid start, but the next three games are pretty key for us. Looking ahead, you know, we've got to play the top three teams at, at the moment sitting in the league, Stirling County, Falkirk and Last Wade. I know we're still trying to settle down and see who's who and where everybody is in the pecking order. And I think those the next three games for us, we'll see where we are and also probably impact on where other teams are as well. Um, hopefully we're the ones that are impacting positively on that. Saturday's game against Jumel was um, interesting. There were some uh, very good points to it. We were in a, a healthy lead. Uh, when we had 15 players in the park, we looked pretty uh, unstoppable at times and in complete control of the game. Then there was a, a period of about 15 minutes where there seemed to be a loss of control from certainly... Uh, our perspective, but that was influenced by uh, probably a refereeing decision, which was um, a bit controversial, as was described in the commentary of the game, with a yellow card to our front row, which wrongly then resulted in another player having to leave the field in, in a bizarre decision where he, he penalised us for not having the correct number of players in the, on the field. We've got clarity on that, and, and we're quite happy that we've done the right thing, and we know that we've done the right thing, and we've had that confirmed by... Uh, by Murrayfield, so we move on, we realise people make mistakes in the heat of the moment, players, coaches, referees, as long as everybody is uh, respectful in how we, how we put that forward and also that we get the appropriate feedback, which we have done from uh, the refereeing department, which is, which is good. But we do welcome back Matty Carrier, our 
influential assistant player coach who will add a lot, I'm sure, will support Captain Murdo Anderson as well in, in making great decisions, which uh, is what we're looking for on the park. And, uh, and this is a key game against Stirling County. It's not going to be easy. We know we're at home, but they're obviously a team that's uh, looking just like Stuart's Melville to bounce back straight back up into that National 1 level uh, and have started well. Uh, also having two five-point wins. So we know it's not going to be easy. We're pleased with the, the start of the season, but we're under no illusions it's going to be a tough a tough ask on Saturday and certainly for the next at least three Saturdays, if not the next 16 Saturdays eh, of league campaign. Graham Patterson. So turning to Berwick then, they're at home at Scrimerson, which is a place they love, and they're playing Falkirk, who are a team on the up. And, uh, well, we haven't seen a big home defeat at Scrimerson for a long, long time. Falkirk will really test that. But similarly, you know, if you underestimate the boys at Scrimerson, then do so at your peril. Totally agree with you with this one. I know if the conditions are right, I think Falkirk can score a lot, a lot of points. Now it's just whether Berwick can stay in the fight. I think, and that's ooh, that's that sounds like I'm writing them off, but I just think there is that little bit of difference between these two sides. The thing that's the leveler is the fact it's at Scremerston. I just think the class that Falkirk have shown over the opening couple of weekends, which is what we go off. You know, I think they are just a little bit above the level of Berwick at the moment, but it's at Scremerston, and they will look to implement their game at home, make it as difficult as possible for Falkirk to try and play rugby and feed off scraps and then after that they can start to build and, and obviously take their chances when they come but that's a it's a difficult game I think Falkirk are going to be one of if not the team to beat in this division now just going off the first couple of weekends OK, it'll be interesting, let's hear from Paul Pringle who's involved obviously in the coaching staff and knows a thing or two about rugby This week we'll welcome Falkirk down to Scremerston and what's no doubt will be a, a tough encounter the, the lads returning, it's great to have them all back. Some will get their jerseys back, some will, you know, unfortunately have to just probably sit out another week and, and try and win their, their way back into the squad through training. One player missing through injury, so Mason Emery, unfortunately, is um, still going through their graduate return to play protocols with a head knock he sustained against Stuart's Melville. Probably another week before we get Mason back, but other than that, the, the squad's pretty strong. We're just really looking forward to getting the full squad back out there, you know, getting a good performance on Saturday and, and hopefully getting the right result. Paul Pringle from the Berwick coaching staff and Berwick against Falkirk going to be an interesting game this weekend. We're certainly keeping an eye on that one. So we go into East League One. Langham got their first win of the season at home to Royal High last week by 45 points to 19, which is uh, particularly good. Royal High, of course, were playing National League rugby last season. So good for Langham to kind of kickstart their season, really, with a win. I mean, they scored 33 points at Broughton, uh, losing 43-33 on the opening day of the season. And uh, you could almost most sort of sense the fact that you know they've moved up to East League One Royal High who were playing National League Rugby last season destroyed them 45 points to 19 but now they're off on the road again to play Forrester yeah I think you know obviously the opening weekend the, the opening weekend jitters perhaps coming a little bit as well but obviously showing that they can score points perhaps you know just thinking about that little step up defensively you mind your mind might not be as committed to you know the contact area the tackle so there's a chance that you can give the opposition a little bit too much credit um, early on. So, you know, I think Langham well settled now, obviously, after getting that good victory, you know, last weekend. And they'll be looking at building it this weekend at Forrester. Into East League 2 and Duns have a home tie against Hoyk Lindeen. Hoyk Lindeen, who last week won 16-15 against Dull Keith, a very, very good result for them. Uh, Duns, on the other hand, lost heavily at Christophen. So uh, you would predict an away win for Hoyt Lindeen. Let's hear from Hoyt Lindeen's Gary Alexander. We head off to Castle Park at Duns this Saturday, uh, coming off the back of a superb 16-15 win against Dalkeith. It was really close uh, game last weekend. Uh, they were a big side as we thought they would be and um, ran really hard at us, but the tackling was superb. It was only a wee bit later in the game that uh, broke one or two tackles to get in behind, but overall uh, it was a great defence. They managed to get a 10-point lead, uh, but they came back at us, scored two tries, we were 15-13 down, got into the last few minutes and we actually had a kick, uh, potentially to win it, which hit the post, or maybe chance had gone, but we managed to work our way back up into the 22, got another penalty, 
uh, kicked it. So squeezed that 16-15 win, which was superb performance by the boys. And uh, to be honest, I don't think it's a game we would have won last year, even with a 10-point lead against as good a side as Dalkeith. We were just that bit fitter. Uh, one or two uh, players have come in. who were just that wee bit stronger. So the signs are good. And take that confidence uh, down to Duns. Uh, they've been struggling really hard season for them last year and they've lost their first couple of games this season which is uh, kind of sad to see because they're a great club with some great folk involved in there but we obviously have to be ruthless aim for a victory to carry on for that win last week against Darkeith In the other match involving a Borders team in East League 2 Hoyt Quinns um, who swept all before them last season in East 3 this year finding it a little bit tough they lost at home to Pennycook last weekend by 30 points to 19 but they've got home comforts at the Wilton Lodge Park against Livingston this weekend Here's the Quinns, Adam Hall A big improvement from the first week uh, last week against Pennycook and we've got another home game this week so we're looking for a little bit more improvement Um, Livingston I've had one win against Lindeen down here and, and a narrow defeat at home to Dunbar, so it should be a tough game, but fingers crossed we can put in a, an improved performance and hopefully go on and get a good result. Into East League 3, Galloway M at home to Liberton, still looking for their first win of the season. Earlson have really changed things around because last year they couldn't buy a win. They've already had two already. Uh, a good win at the Hawk against Lismore last week, 46 points to five. And they, they really are on the turn now. And they are playing in Verleith on the road. And let's hear from head coach Cammy Hill. First away game of the season as we travel out to Inverleith. Um, it's looking like it's going to be a good test up there on Saturday uh, with them sitting top of the league, having good wins over Galloway and Liberton. But, um, of course, we've started off this season strongly as well. Two very good wins over Edinburgh Medics and Lismore. To be honest, I couldn't have asked the lads for a much better start to the season, especially when you look back at last season's results against both these clubs, in which we seem to struggle slightly. We're really starting to build now, and over the last two games, especially Lismore, we were pretty dominant in most areas, um, which is pleasing. But we can't get too carried away. There'll be harder tests throughout the season, which we'll have to overcome. But the positive signs are the lads are buying into the new style of play the coaches are asking for. And that's probably a lot down to the fact we're winning games, so they can now see the processes working, so it's easier to buy into. So looking ahead to this weekend's fixture, there was a few small issues we had to work on at training. But overall, the feedback I gave the team, they took on board well um, and had a very positive reaction to it. So training's been really good this week. Squad-wise, unfortunately, last weekend's man of the match, Stevie Denham, is unavailable. So the back line will shuffle about a bit. But that doesn't give me any real concerns. There's there's plenty of youth and potential in there with a bit of experience as well, which is good. The pack stays the same as last week weekend's, which is brilliant, as I'm really starting to get them to gel now. And they're giving a good platform for the backs, which is great giving them plenty of ball to work with. So it's not going to be an easy fixture this weekend, but I'm confident if we stick to our game plan and our structure, we'll have a really good chance of getting a result. Cammy Hill, and we're live on Rugby Radio from 2.30 tomorrow, coming to you direct from Philip Hawk for Selkirk against Jed Forrest. We'll have TV highlights of that game and also Hoik v Kelso from Mansfield Park. That's over the weekend on Borders Rugby TV. And don't forget to check out our new Scottish Club Rugby podcast, which is now out. And uh, there's a new website, of course, rugbyradio.co.uk as well, if you're into all the 50 clubs in the national divisions. But also, of course, course, bordersrugby.net will give you all the information that you need. Do check it all out and we'll see you on Rugby Radio tomorrow at half past two. But for now, from Dale and me, good night. <laughs>